How's it going everybody? This is Echo Papa and today we're going to talk about building our own shift button. Now if you're cool enough to already have a controller with a shift button, that's great. Uh, with this you'll hopefully be able to add some more functionality, maybe just some buttons that aren't being used. Uh, also if you have a controller that does not have a shift button, well we're going to show you how to build your own on top of the controller that you already have. Now what we got here is a Newmark DJ to go. The Newmark DJ to go is a it's a cool little controller. However, it's kind of limited in its functionality. I mean, it's got the basics, you know, volume, play, pause, cue buttons, uh, but uh, you can't do anything fancy with it. So what I did is I added a shift button so that way we can do some more fancy stuff with it. So now this controller doesn't have a shift button and if your controller doesn't have a shift button, you're either gonna have to make another button pull double duty or you're gonna have to uh, make one of your other buttons, you're gonna have to sacrifice it and turn it into a shift button if you wanna do this. Now uh, I've used the, the pre-fader button right here and uh, when I press it, you can see uh, it lights up a little bit and I just did that so that way I know when it's actually shift. Now it being, it still works as a pre-fader button. I can come over here and, and uh, it works uh, just fine. And when I hold it down, then it turns into a shift. Now let's show you some of the things that I was able to do with my controller. Now the play button also acts as a pause button. But what I can also make it do is uh, with the shift button, I made it act like a stutter button also. So that button now serves double duty. It's now a play pause button and a stutter button. Uh, same thing with the Q button. Uh, if you watch, I've turned the Q button to make it as a stop button so it will jump through the different Q points. Uh, the next thing I did is the pitch bend buttons. Uh, I like to work with loops whenever I can and unfortunately this controller doesn't have one so I made one into the pitch bend buttons. I'm turning this into a loop in and a loop out. And now we have a nice little loop. And then we can loop out when we're done. The other thing I've done is I've taken the browse button, which uh, normally uh, just browses through your files, and I have turned it into a filter button, and it now controls uh, the filter on my track. So that's all well and cool, but uh, now we're gonna teach you how to do it so that way you can build your own. Now you don't have to use the same functions that I did. You can do whatever you want. Uh, your imagination is the limit. So let's jump right in and get right to it. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our config section. And we're gonna go, and we're gonna select our Newmark DJ to go. Uh, you obviously would select whatever controller you, that you have. Now I have it right here uh, as the shift mapping right now, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change that. We're just gonna go to factory default. Uh, next thing I would do is I would go ahead and give this a new name. So we'll call this um, shift to we're gonna save it you can call it whatever you want okay so now basically what we have right here is a copy of the factory map now the first thing we're gonna do is we want to make the uh, the button our pre fader level which is the the headphone button we're gonna make that uh, when we're holding it down we're gonna make it into uh, our shift button so you can use whatever button you like. So, and here's how we're gonna do it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it as a select button so that way it'll still work as a headphone button. Then we're gonna change it and we're gonna add a little ampersand right there. That means we can add another command. Okay, we're gonna switch this to toggle. And we're gonna add the name of our uh, shift. Now, I believe that there is a, a variable that's constant specifically for shifting in virtual DJ, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make my own. Uh, you make sure that you put the, um, the little quotes around it. Uh, okay, dollar sign is what I'm using. Dollar sign in front of your variable means that it covers the entire software. A percentage sign means it only covers left deck or right deck. There may be situations where you want the, sh the shift button to only control the left side or the right side, but uh, typically you're gonna want it to be the whole thing. So, so we're gonna do that. So dollar sign, I'm just gonna call it shift. And then another one, okay. Now what this does is the select button obviously acts like the select button. That's our, our your standard uh, PFL button. Uh, but 
this next command toggle and then shift it's going to toggle what that does is it uh, changes this from a, uh, a yes to a no or actually from, in this case from a no to a yes or here it's going to be um, from a zero to a one because any variable by default is going to start off with a value of zero and when we toggle it it's just going to go uh, from zero to one and now we're going to put this to while pressed now that is the the important part right there because that is when we hold it down then it's only it's going to be shifted as soon as we let it go it's going to go back to being just a normal uh, pfl button so now that we have that uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to do it so it flashes so we're going to go here to the this is the led your controller may or may not have an led and you may or not may not want it to flash but uh we do select and that's just saying that if it's selected it's going to light up so we're going to go here same thing uh we're actually we're going to go right in front of it and this command that we're going to uh, type in now this is going to be the basis for all the other uh, commands that we're going to do for the rest of the controller so let's go var which is stands for variable put in our little quotes put in the name of our variable quotes variable shift zero okay question mark now what we just did is we uh we asked it now is is the value of this variable is it zero well then it's going to be uh whatever select is and in this case if the deck is selected um like over in here deck a is selected and so the left uh the left button would be lit up uh and then we're going to put a little colon in there and then now we're going to put in what happens when shift does not equal zero when it equals one and that's what our toggle is going to do and we're going to put in blink and you can put in uh, a time if you just blink it blinks, blinks kind of slow because shift is probably something that you're going to use for a second and then turn right back off uh, i'm going to put in 100 ms it's 100 milliseconds or basically 0.1 seconds so it's going to flash pretty quick uh, much faster than that and you're uh it, it's kind of it's flashes so fast it's kind of annoying but you know the uh, how fast you want to flash is up to you you may want to flash slower so um next thing we're going to do is now that we got this working uh, i'm going to go ahead and, and test it and i tested it and it's working fine So next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy half of this right here. We're going to copy where it says variable shift zero and the question mark. And you know what? Let's add the space in there too. So we're going to take all that, hit control C. And what that does, is it's going to copy that. And, and we're going to take the buttons that we want to add our shift function to. So the shift sync button, we're going to do that. Put that in there. We're going to hit control V. That's going to paste it. So now there's a little command in there. And we're gonna go to the end, we're gonna put in a colon. We're gonna do that with all the buttons that we wanna do that too. And then we'll come back and actually add the functionality in a minute. So we're gonna do the Q button there. Put a colon at the end. Our play pause button. Put the colon at the end. Make sure you leave a space. Uh, our PFL button is actually our, um, uh, our shift button. So we're not gonna do anything with that. Uh, load, uh, you could make it like unload or something weird. So let's go down to pitch buttons. We're going to make them our in and out. Okay. Add our colon. Then same thing here. With our other pitch colon. And the last one we're going to do is we're going to do our browser scroll. Put our colon at the end. Okay. Now, um, so let's go back to our, our sync, our first one. And it's, uh, basically what we did is we have set it up. So right now, if shift equals zero, um, which is it's going to be by default, um, it's going to do whatever function it did originally. Okay. And then after the colon, put a little space, and we're going to type in whatever we want it to do um, when it's not um, uh, when it's not a uh, when it's shifted. So uh, usually for me, I like to do something 
typically that is related to what it's already doing, like maybe the opposite of what it's doing or something that's kind of what I call like sympathetic to what it's doing. Like for example, the play pause, play stutter, they're, they're sympathetic kind of buttons to each other. Um, or something that's like the opposite, like if it's a load button, turn it into an unload button. Um, so in this case, the sync button, we're gonna make it because the sync syncs the music to a certain tempo. If you wanna go back, we're gonna type in pitch and we're gonna do a pitch reset. So now the sync button when shift is gonna act like a pitch reset button. The Q stop button, we're just gonna make it act like a stop button. Uh, see what I'm doing now? I'm basically just adding in commands after that colon and you can make it whatever you want. Plays ba pause button, we're gonna make it act like a play stutter button. We're gonna go down here to these, our pitch bend. Um, now, actually, the minus is the one on the left, so I'm gonna make that one the, the loop. Oops. Loop in, and then go back up to our plus button and make it our loop out. Uh, last one, we're gonna go down to our browser, and then that's the one that we're just gonna just type in filter. Don't type, don't do filter activate, just do filter. Filter activate just turns on the filter, and we want it to actually control the filter. Now, which because the uh, in this case this browser is um, it's on the uh, in the center and it's it's generic to either side. So the one it's going to activate is whichever one you have selected. So if you have deck A selected, that's the one it's going to control. Uh, likewise, deck B you can control deck B. So. Um, so now when we press our shift button, we will now get all these second features and you can, you don't have to use these ones that I put in like filter and you know, whatever you want to use, it's up to your imagination. And in fact, if you come up with something really cool, please let me know, uh, make a little video of it and, um, you know, uh, post it down in the comments and, uh, cause I'd love to see what you guys uh, create. So anyway, that's it for me. Um, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at DJ Echo Papa. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you really liked it, share it with your friends or better yet, subscribe. Until next time, I'm Echo Papa, and I will talk to you later.